Welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic, where I'm going to do my very best to answer some of your tech related questions. It's me this week because Ollie is working some more magic on his dying plants and hopefully giving himself a haircut. If you do have any questions you want us to answer here on the GCN Tech Clinic, please leave them in the comment section below or on any of our social media channels using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Right, let's get started. First question this week. Hey GCN Tech, what type of pedals are best to use? What are the differences between them all? I've had a knee injury in the past. Is there a type of pedal that is best for this? So this is a really good question because there are a whole host of different pedals out there. It is really important to get to your pedals right because it is the main contact point between you and the bike and you are fixed to it if you are using clipless pedals. There are a whole host of different pedals with lots of different um, benefits. They all kind of do work the same. The biggest difference in all the pedals is the float. So the float being the adjustment um, in the cleat, so how much it can move from, from side to side, and that then allows the knee to move in different positions. Typically, Speedplay pedals do have more float in them than Shimano. The, um, the Speedplay pedals have a lot of adjustability. They have three different layers that can all be really finely adjusted. These are really popular with bike fitters when they're setting up anybody that's had knee pain. They were also very popular with Bradley Wiggins that he used in his cycling career, even though they weren't sponsor correct. Shimano have three different types of cleats. They have the yellow, the blue, and the red ones. The yellow ones have six degrees of float in them, the blue ones a little bit less, and then the red ones are pretty much fixed. If we then compare that to the Speedplay pedals, which have 15 degrees of float, so quite a bit more. We all know that we need to replace our cleats because they will wear. As you can see, mine have here, I'd say I have a month or two left in them before I need to replace them. We do need to replace our pedals too because these will wear and riding worn out pedals will lead to some niggles and can lead to knee injury. So don't overlook this. Um, please do replace your pedals after time to save any injuries. If you are having trouble with your knee pain, it might be worth going to see a bike fit specialist as they can work out what the problem is and make some adjustments to either your bike or your cleats. Overall, all the major road pedals do seem to work quite well. If you're looking to do a bit more off-roading or looking to walk around in your cleats a lot, Ollie and Dan did quite an interesting video on this, so make sure you check it out. You also get to see Ollie running, which is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> On to the next question. I scratched my aluminium top tube today. What would be the best way to fix this? Or is that otherwise not possible? Scratching your bike is the worst and I've done it many times. But don't worry, it can be fixed. You can buy touch-up paint. It's the same touch-up paint as you would buy for your car. So as long as you find the right matching color paint, it will work perfectly fine. You could even take your bike down to the local supermarket car park, have a browse around the cars, see what color matches, jot down the number plate, go to an online tool and find the right color paint. If you do find you are scratching your bike a lot, you can get PPF, which is a paint protection film that you can get off the internet and size down and cut it and put it on your bike. You often get this on the chain stay of the bike so it's a similar clear film. You can put all over your bike. I'll just protect it, keep it in a nice bubble. Next question in from James. When do you know when your rims need to be changed? I know some alloy rims have wear indicators, but what if they don't and what about carbon? This is a really good question and your alloy rims will wear because it's used as a braking surface for rim brakes. You won't have this problem if you have disc brakes. And it's actually really simple. They wear down because of the constant pressure from the brakes. So you'll be using your brakes more if you're in the mountains and descending. You probably won't have um, as much of a problem if you're just a city commuter, but most alloy rims will have a wear indicator on them and they'll make it really obvious when your rims are nearing the end of their life. If your wheel doesn't have a wear indicator, then you can still identify worn out rims, sometimes by just looking at them. If not, you can just run your finger along the rim and you'll be able to feel a little curve in it. That's where all the materials have just worn out. 
Um, for carbon wheels, it's worth checking with your manufacturer and see what they recommend. You also want to watch out for delamination of the carbon layers um, coming apart, so also bear that in mind. Next question in. Uh, hi Ollie, I'm a Brooks student with a Cube Agree Race C62 Carbon, but my cadence is too high for me, so I wanted to upgrade my Altegra 50 tooth chainring to a 105 52 tooth chainring. Is this possible? So yes, it is possible, but you could just shift down a gear into a bit of harder gear, but failing that, yes, this is possible. You might need to get yourself a longer chain and you might need to adjust your front derailleur to accommodate the bigger chain. You also need to make sure you have the right number of bolts and the BCD matches your chain set and you should be absolutely fine. Next question in from Robert. My left hand reaches about one inch further on my drop handlebar than my right. Is this something I should worry about? So it sounds like you've got one arm longer than the other. In all seriousness, the only thing I can think of from a bike perspective is making sure your handlebars are in line. So when your wheel is straight, that your handlebars are straight as well. You don't want one off to one side. I actually have a similar problem. So my right shoulder sits quite a bit further forward than my left one. So meaning that everything is a little bit further forward. You probably can't see from the angle. I don't know why I did that. Um, but I haven't changed anything on my bike. I'm still quite comfortable how I am. So if it is causing you any pain, you might want to do something about it. See uh, a bike fit um, or a physio. If it's not causing you any pain, I don't see why you should change anything. Just carry on how you are. Last question in this week from Offshore Doug. I have a 2019 Trek Madone and wanted to remove a five millimeter spacer. I have done this and add, never added the spacer back again. I can't see why I have to, is this okay? Right, so if you removed a spacer from on top of the stem and you didn't cut the steerer down, then you definitely need to put that back. So when you clamp the top cap back down, there needs to be a gap between the steerer and the spacers. It's difficult to explain, so hopefully I'll be able to find a picture to put here now. That's it for the GCN Tech Clinic this week. I hope I've managed to answer all your tech related questions. Remember, if you do have a question that you need answering, please leave it in the comments section below or on any of our social media channels using the hashtag AskGCNTech.